recently had a question from Mr. Green about his wipers that are not working correctly on his BMW E38 7 Series. And this is an early production, I want to say around 94 or 1995 model year. Now I don't have the vehicle to go ahead and take apart and do the physical testing to show you exactly how to do it using another car but I can go over wiring diagrams, component locations, and instructions to help you diagnose the problem on your BMW. Now I've done some research and put together some pictures of wiring diagrams um, and those component locations and some testing procedures that you can do to help troubleshoot this. Well, it's always good to start with the basics. Now on this early E38 you actually have two wiper relays. Um, I believe they um, might be a black relay. Um, I think the picture that I have is in black and white but uh, you can usually tell by the location which is going to be underneath the control modules in the e-box so that you can find these relays and test them. Well the first thing to check and this is wiper relay 1 you have one feed right here this is from fuse 28 and that's going to feed the working side of wiper relay 1. If you come down here this is component A1 a1 is actually the general module. So if you look, it's the general module that's going to be grounding this circuit. This is a little processor symbol right here. So that's going to be activating this wiper relay. So one thing you could check at the wiper relay or at the general module, are you getting this ground signal which is activating this relay? This is the working side of the relay right here. So you also check fuse 28 both sides and you should also have power at pin 8 right here with the key on. Now you're not going to see power here even if it's activated. Actually I should take it back. If you see power at pin 4 it's not activated. It would just be voltage potential. When this grounds the working side you'll lose the voltage. So if you checked it here this is your feed. If it's activated it's going to drop out the voltage from this side so you won't see anything here. Alright, now over here, fuse 3, it's a 30 amp fuse. This is actually the feed sign, 4 wiper, the feed side, 4 wiper relay 1. So you can check fuse 3, power at pin 2 at the wiper relay. And then if it's activated, you should have power coming out on pin 6. This is off right here, this is ground and then that's going to feed K37 and that's actually another relay so you have two relays in two stages stage one actually feeds the second relay so if you had a problem with the second relay nothing's going to work so like I said you have pin 6 and then this looks like also pin 6 at the K37 relay so let me show you the K37 relay diagram now this diagram is going to be very similar to the wiper relay for stage one. Now for this relay, the working side is also fuse 28, that 5 amp fuse. That's going to be in the fuse box in the inch compartment near where the electronic control units are. I believe it's the right hand side of the inch compartment on a left hand drive vehicle. Now this is the working side again, it's also controlled by the general module. So and potentially if you had an issue with the general module not sending this activation signal, your wipers will never turn on. I have seen a few general modules be, a fit, be the cause of the problem, but I would say it's more rare and you'd probably always want to start with the relays regardless just to make sure 100%. Alright, so over here this is K36, that was that other relay. And here's that pin 6, and also pin 6 to wiper relay 2. Now, w what this relay was doing is supplying power to the other relay, which is then going to send power through this late relay, depending on which stage. We have a stage 1 and stage 2. Stage 1, power is going to go this way. 
This is not going to be activated. Power is going to travel down this way to pin 2 of the wiper motor, which M3 is the wiper motor. So if you go to the wiper motor itself and unplug this connector right here, and I have a picture of that I'll show you in a minute, you could actually check for voltage at pin 2 and you should see 12 volts with wiper with the wiper motor in stage 1. Now if you have stage 2 active you're actually going to see the voltage at pin 3 which is going to have the wiper motor run faster. And this relay would then be activated so you'd have voltage here you're going to have that most likely at all times and then with it activated you're going to see the voltage drop out because this is going to be grounding the circuit right here that's going to pull that relay contact over and then you'll have power to the wiper motor at pin 3. So you could go to the connector on the wiper motor, activate your wipers, and check to see if you get voltage to the wiper motor. That's going to tell you a few things. One, if you do get voltage on either pin 2 or 3 and it lights a test light, that's enough uh, voltage it should be causing that wiper motor to activate correctly. So that would prove that your wiper motor is actually what's faulty. You could also, now your wiper motor is going to be have its own ground, so you could put 12 volts to pin 2 and 12, volt, 12 volts to pin 3. If you have a fused um, little jumper that you could make, it would be a good idea just, just to be safe, but put 12 volts to pin 2, your wiper motor should run. 12 volts here, your wiper, your wiper motor should run. So that's another test that you can do is actually jump the wiper motor. Now this is a picture of that connector X333. Now you have to take this cover off right here to access the wiper motor which is on the driver's side on a left hand drive vehicle. This is your connector right here. There's going to be a little press tab that you can release to slide that uh, connector off. And then you can check your voltage here at those pins or even run a wire. Um, or back probe if you have to to feed that wiper motor some voltage and get it to activate to test the wiper motor itself. Now to access that connector you do have to take this cover off. This right here is the brake booster so that cover is actually going to be right above the brake booster. It's held on by some screws. Um, this is with the wiper arms removed. I'm not sure if you can get that cover off. I believe you should be able to. There's a couple of screws up top here. You should be able to sneak that cover off to access that plug to do a test without having to take the wiper arms off themselves. If you do have to take those wiper arms off, um, you do have to take these covers off to access the screw 1, which is right over here. Let me just go through this real quick. Alright, so once you get that screw off, most of the time they don't come off very easy. You also have to take the caps off of the lower section for the other side wiper arm. And then you have the screws on that as, as well. I have this tool right here. It works amazing. Um, a lot of times that wiper arm isn't going to want to come off. Um, this is a puller tool which actually will hook on the bottom right underneath and then you screw this down it actually pulls it right up pops them off and you need a tool like this to remove those wiper arms now this is the location of both of those relays and they're actually right next to each other this is the K37 relay which is wiper 2 which is going to be this one over here and the K36 is right next to it and this is going to be in the right hand side of the engine compartment in the E box. That's where your um, that's where your DME engine computer and transmission control computer is. It's also where that fuse panel is. You can see part of the fuse is right here. You have to take the rest of the cover off to access those uh, relays. Um, you can see they're actually held on just by those little clips right there and there. Most of the time if you give them a wiggle you can pop them right off. I have a couple of videos on my E46. I'm taking out some relays and I go over how to do that. Um, they're also usually held on by a little slide tab on the back where you have to press on it and either push them down to release them. I don't think they usually pull up. They, they lock in. Sometimes you have to hook them up from underneath and lock them in. So they have a little like release tab and then you can slide those off. 
or you could pop the relay off and actually do a couple of tests right on top. Um, you could even supply voltage to the motor at the relay itself. Just review back uh, to that uh, wiring diagram. So you could actually put voltage to the correct pin, just make sure it is the correct pin, to the motor and the motor should run if the motor is good. Um, I'd probably do it at the K37 relay. That's the one that feeds the motor itself. Just to go over that, this is the K37 one right here. And so that's actually pin 2 at wiper relay 2 and pin 5 at wiper relay 2. And pin 5 feeds stage 1, which is pin 2 at the motor. And pin 2 at wiper relay 2 feeds pin 3 at the wiper motor. So I think reviewing and going through this step by step, obviously fuses are always first. You can swap out those relays, it's a good idea, um, before condemning the wiper motor. Or you could go ahead and put some voltage on there and either jump the wiper motor or jump the relay to try to determine if this is the relay's wiring or uh, the wiper motor itself. And unfortunately in some rare cases it could also be the general module because that is the activation side. Now how do you test the general module? You could activate the wiper and you'd be looking for at pin 4 you could do it there on like back probe you'd be looking at like a ground signal. So you take your voltmeter, one end on vehicle ground, one on pin four, and when it activates, you should see continuity to ground because it's actually gonna be grounding this circuit here, which is gonna be closing that relay. So another test that you could do would be to, if you ground pin four yourself, right? So pin four to ground, wiper relays in place, you have good voltage here, Say you're getting pass-through voltage here to uh, pin 6 at, at relay stage 2. If you went ahead and put pin 4 to ground, it would activate that relay. It would switch over to stage 2, and you should the wiper should actually run. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, it's too bad I don't have an early 7 series to actually go over some of these locations and do the test myself. Currently I only have my E46, but hopefully this will help you find uh, the root cause of the problem.